Alright, this lesson is on classifying quadrilaterals. So what we want to be able to do here is we want to be able to do something similar to what we did in the last lesson on classifying triangles. We want to be able to, uh, when we're given some information about a quadrilateral, basically a quadrilateral lateral defined by four vertices, um, we want to be able to classify it based on the lengths of the sides and um, by the angles or which sides are parallel or perpendicular to each other. And we want to be able to do all of this by using the length and the slope formulas to find the information that we need about the sides in order to do that classification. So we'll start by just sort of going over some types of quadrilaterals that we might encounter here. Um, the simplest one is probably a trapezoid. You can see a little picture here of what a trapezoid looked like. And we want to, when we're talking about these different quadrilaterals, focus in on what are the features that define that type of quadrilateral. So the defining feature of a trapezoid is that it has one pair of opposite sides that are parallel to each other. Basically, these sides here and here are parallel to one another, and the other two sides can be whatever they want. Um, moving down, we've got what's known as a parallelogram here. The defining characteristic of a parallelogram is that two pairs of opposite sides are parallel to each other. So this side here and this side here are parallel, and this side here and this side here are parallel. Now, as a result of this, the sides that are opposite each other are going to be the same length. So this side here and this side here are the same length, and this side here and this side here are the same length. Similar to parallelogram, we have a rhombus. A rhombus has two pairs of opposite sides that are parallel. So this side here is parallel to this side here. This side here and this side here are parallel to each other. But all four of our sides are the same length. One, two, three, four. So a rhombus is just a special type of parallelogram. Finally, we have uh, a circle and a square, which should be familiar to us. But in terms of the defining character, uh, sorry, a rectangle and a square, the defining properties of a rectangle are that we have two pairs of opposite sides that are parallel, like this and like this. Um, as a result, the two pairs of opposite sides are the same length, here and here, and here and here. So, so far, these are just the properties of a parallelogram. But a rectangle has the additional feature that all four of our angles are right angles. So adjacent sides are perpendicular to each other. So our long side is perpendicular to our short sides, which are perpendicular to our long sides. And finally, in our square, square is just a, uh, sort of a, a more restrictive kind of a rectangle here. We've got two pairs of opposite sides that are parallel. We've got all four sides the same length, one, two, three, four. And just like in our rectangle, adjacent sides are perpendicular to us because we have these four right angles here in each corner. So what do you need to be able to do with these definitions and these key characteristics? Well, here's a basic problem. Quadrilateral has vertices A, B, C, and D. They want us to classify the quadrilateral. So. What we're going to be, end up doing is we're going to, for each side of our quadrilateral, we'll be finding the lengths of the sides and the slopes of the sides, and we're going to use that information to figure out what type of quadrilateral it is. A good first step, though, is graphing these points and drawing a sketch of our quadrilateral so we can kind of see what's going on here. So point A here, um, let's fix this. Um, we'll have our origin right here. Point A is at negative 9, 3. So I'm going to use a scale here so that each box is 2. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 9. And then down 2, th up 3. 2, 3. So that'll be point A right there. Point B is at 2, 5. So 2, 2, 4, 5. Point B is going to be right there. C is at 12, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, right there. And then D is at 1, negative 2, right about there. So that's our quadrilateral right there like that. Okay. Now, this looks, just by looking at it, it looks like it might be a parallelogram, it might be a rhombus, but it's hard to tell because 
um, we've, we've graphed it as accurately as we could, but that's not 100% accurate. So we want to be able to answer these questions algebraically. So our first step here is we are going to find the lengths of all four sides. And we're going to do this using the length formula that we've gotten a lot of practice using here. So uh, we want to keep this organized. So I'm going to say um, we'll do AB first. And of course, the formula that we're using every time is that the length is going to be x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And then we take the square root. Okay, so I'm not going to write this formula out every single time, but just so you know that that's where we're going here. So if I'm doing from A to B, B is going to be X2, Y2, and A is going to be X1, Y1. So my B X coordinate is 2, my A X coordinate is negative 9, and we want to subtract those and then square it. And then for our Y's, our Y for B is 5, and then our y for a is 3. So let's work out what this is. Um, 2 minus negative 9 is going to be 11. So 11 squared plus 2 squared is going to give us um, square root of 125, 121 plus 4. Now I could turn this into a decimal or I can just leave it as a square root. Um, it doesn't really matter because all I'm going to be doing is comparing the values that I get at the end of this. So we've done it for AB here. Let's go ahead and repeat this calculation for BC. So BC, our X's are going to be, let's see, 12 minus 2 squared plus our Y's are 0 minus 5. So we're going to get the square root of 10 squared plus negative 5 squared. Remember your order of operations here. I can do 0 minus 5 to get negative 5 first. It's that negative 5 that is squared. But when I square the negative 5, it's going to be a positive 25. I just add in this extra step because 5, negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. So we get root 125. So already we can sort of see that this side and this side are the same length. So the idea that this is a rhombus um, is looking kind of good actually right now, but we want to make sure that we get the lengths of all of these sides to be 100% certain. So let's just keep going here. CD, our length is going to be, um, our x's are 1 minus 12 squared plus negative 2 minus 0 squared. This is going to be square root of negative 11 squared plus negative 2 squared, which is going to be uh, 121 plus 4, root 125. And then our final calculation, we can do the length of AD. See, our coordinates for that are going to be 1 minus negative 9 squared plus negative 2 minus 3 squared. The square root of 10 squared plus negative 5 squared is going to be root 125. So coming back to our diagram here, all of these sides are the same length. Okay. So at this point, we know that um, A, B, C, D is either a rhombus or a square. Okay. These are two possibilities. Now, Looking at our diagram, we're pretty sure that this is going to be a rhombus, okay, because it doesn't look like we have any right angles in our uh, diagram here. But our conclusions have to be based on the algebra that we've done. And so based on these calculations, right, 
All we know for certain right now is that all four sides are the same length, and there are two quadrilaterals that have all four sides the same length, rhombus and a square. So how are we going to show whether it's a rhombus or a square? That's where our slope information is going to come in. So we are going to find the slope of all four sides. And we're going to use these slopes to figure out whether any of our sides are perpendicular to each other. And that'll tell us whether we have a square or not. We're also going to use this slope information to verify that our opposite sides are in fact uh, parallel to each other, which is another feature of our rhombus and our square. So we're going to use this slope formula that we've been using all along. This is y2 minus y1 x2 minus x1, and I'm not going to write that out every time. I'm just going to jump right to the values here. Four. So for line AB, our y's are 5 and 3, and then 2 minus negative 9 for our x's. So we end up with 2 over 11 for our slope. For our next BC, again, we're going to do y2. 0 minus y1, 5, 12 minus 2, we get 5 over 10, or 1 half. Uh, sorry, negative 5, so negative 1 half. Okay, let's go ahead and do this BC. Next up is going to be CD. So y2 is a negative 2, minus y1 is 0, x2 is 1, minus 12, negative 2 over 11. So negative 2 over negative 11, or 2 over 11. Okay, so this is good because right here we can see that these two sides, which are opposite sides, um, these guys are parallel because they have the same slope. We'll finish this off by finding the slope of side, um, let's do DA. So Y2 is going to be negative 2. Um, my y value from a is 3, and then we're going to have 1 minus negative 9. Negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5, so negative 5 over 10, or negative 1 half. Oh, okay, so we see that this side and this side are parallel because they have the same slope. And then when we compare um, our slopes of adjacent sides, they are not negative reciprocals. Because uh, 2 over 11 is not the negative reciprocal of negative 1 half. So we can conclude, well, we, we come to our conclusion here. So we know that um, our shape has, so therefore, let's see, all four sides are the same length. Opposite sides are parallel. Um, let's say no sides are perpendicular. So A, B, C, D is a rhombus. Okay. So we want to, in our calculate, in our conclusion here, say what are the features, like what are the key points from all of this algebra that we've done that we're relying on to classify our shape here. So we did the length of all four sides and we found that all four sides are the same length. We did the slope of all four sides. We can conclude from those slopes that opposite sides are parallel and that none of our sides are perpendicular.
it's those three things that make us 100% certain that ABCD is a rhombus.